And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're talking about Nocturna. Now this is a card game in which you're a bunch of greedy people and you've inherited an old woman's house and you have to leave the furniture or the, the pictures the same way and you're arranging the furniture the way the pictures are and meanwhile the ghost is haunting you and you're trying to win. <laughs> the theme really doesn't make any sense. But that doesn't mean it's a bad game. Or does it? Let's look. What you're doing in this game is you're building a mansion. This has six rooms in it here, and then there's an elevator that goes from one floor to the other floor. Although if you want to, you can build it so that it has three levels and the elevator goes up and down between the three levels, but you really shouldn't do that. Each player is gonna have a pawn, and these pawns will start in different rooms uh, of the game, and on your turn, you are going to have three actions. And what you can do is pretty simple. You can move from one room to another room on the same floor for one action. You can move to the elevator for an action and then move the elevator up or down for free if you want to move farther than one floor it costs an extra action. Or you can take the top card from a stack where you're at and put that card in your hand. Or you can play a card in front of you that you've gotten. Now the cards are going to be, most of the cards, well, maybe not most, half the cards, are item cards. There's two different item cards. There's an item card like this here with a red dot. This doesn't match any of the rooms. It's just your generic item card. But then there's an item card like this chair, which matches this room here. And what you're trying to do is, the scoring at the end of the game is, every item you have that's a generic one is worth two points. A room one is also worth two points, but the second room card of the same room is worth four points, so then you have six points for both of them. And then the third card from that same room would be worth six points, so 12 points if you have all three. So you can see these three items here match this room here, and so I have a matching set. So in essence, it's kind of a set collecting game. If you're in a room with somebody else, let's say green is here, and green has the horse and this card, Green can spend two actions to steal a card from someone else, or to trade them. I'm sorry, but it's basically the same as stealing. Let's say he has his dumb old generic one. So that's the only time you're allowed to do that. You're only allowed to steal if you have a card of the set that you're stealing. And that's kind of the game, except then we have a whole bunch of action cards. Now, the, first of all, we have these three action cards. The knife, the gun, and the shotgun. So the way this works is, I have a knife, and if you go in a room and you want to start a duel with someone to steal one of their cards. And so I say, okay, I'm going to start a duel. And so you play the knife card and then your opponent plays the gun because a gun beats a knife. But a shotgun beats a gun, but somehow the knife is faster than the shotgun, so it beats the shotgun. Although if the knife was faster than the shotgun, wouldn't it beat? Okay, but that doesn't matter. It's essentially a rock, paper, scissors thing that you can play. But there's other cards that you can play too. Someone challenges you for a duel, you say, I'm out of here. And you say, uh, no, you're not, or you can make someone lose a turn, but they could have keys. <laughs> it's an oddly specific card that stops the handcuffs. Um, looking at other players' hands, stealing a card from people. Here are cards that give you extra actions on your turn. And there's all sorts of special cards, but they're all mostly take that cards. When you're searching for cards, you might search the top card and find um, just your you know, a, more action cards you can add in your hand. There's all different cards that you can add, but sometimes when you're searching, you are going to find uh, the the old crone herself, the ghost. Woo! Woo! Okay, when that happens, you lose a turn because she is so scary or ugly, I don't know. She seems like a nice person, but uh, anyhow. So she scares you, and when it happens, you go to the elevator and you will lose a turn. And then everyone else at the table has to close their eyes and you're going to put this card underneath one of the stacks anywhere you want. And then the game progresses. The game will keep going until all the room items, the card, ones shown on the cards, are gotten, procured by the players. At that point you end the game and you add up points for whoever has 
uh, the items of the different types. The player with the most points is the winner. So Nocturna is a game and the idea is interesting. Moving from room to room, going up and down the elevator, finding stuff. The theme though almost works against the game. What are you doing? Why are, are you having a rock, paper, scissors thing, which actually doesn't work half the time because I, it's basically, I have a gun. What do you have? Uh, nothing. I win. But even if I did have a gun and you had a knife and I won, wouldn't you be dead or wounded? It's just kind of, I scared you off. I'm not, I'm not sure what the deal is. But let's take aside the silly theme of the game. It's really just awful random. You're just going around grabbing cards and hoping you get the good ones. You put cards down, trade them with the people to get the cards that you want. Uh, and they don't really have a choice about it anyway. And kind of slow, only having two actions. And, oh, look, I drew yet another useless card here. And it just isn't a very interesting game. It is interesting when the grandma spirit shows up and people hide and everyone else closes their eyes. I like that aspect of the game. That was interesting. And there, there's almost like a a whole game in and of itself based around that. But as it is, Nocturna itself just really doesn't inspire at all. It has to take that flavor. It's a little too fiddly, I guess would be the word, or just a little too much, okay, if I do this, what happens here? What does this card even mean again? But at the same time, there's no satisfying conclusion. The theme, I mean, I understand some people don't care if you know the theme is there or not, but the theme kind of here detracts. Why am I running around this place? Why am I getting these pieces of furniture? It doesn't really make sense. And then on top of that, the game itself just feels very, very random. And that's not that good for this game if you're not having that much fun otherwise. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.